this is Emma Yuvan. There are three reasons why hands and forearms can get stiff. When we try to control the quality of the tone without knowing how to exactly make it. And this confusion while trying to make tone soft and yet short brings unhealthy tension to our mind, to our body. And we're gonna fix it by imagining sounds and intonating staccato in the right way so hands would be still empty and light, yet the tone would be controlled with our mind and a vocal cord. Second, our arm gets stiff when we try to reach accuracy in jumps without knowing how to exactly make it. And this confusion while trying to build security in large lips again brings unhealthy tension to our mind and body. And we're going to fix it with correct wrist and elbow movements, with intonating intervals, with musical speech, and also with some hands rearrangement. So our hands would be still light and empty, playing effortlessly, yet the distance in jumps would be controlled by elbow movements and by, uh, with our vocal cords. And the third reason, our hands and forearms can get stiff when we try to speed up without knowing how to exactly make it. And this confusion while trying to move fingers and hands faster brings unhealthy tension to our mind, to our body. And we're gonna fix it with good phrasing, the art of breathing. So playing would be still effortless and speed would be controlled by distributing energy in vocal cords. So uh, correct phrasing creates this kind of waves of energies up and down and as soon as uh, we reach the top everything that is going down with kind of exhalation will be played with no effort with kind of natural gravity so you would use uh, a little bit of effort just in the beginning of every wave and the rest you know will take care of itself by itself so that's how phrasing works anyways um, that was a little intro for today's video, now let's get started. And again, I'm gonna start with my orange. And I must say that um, uh, when I practice this part a little bit, I already noticed that uh, this this middle D, excuse me, this middle D, <laughs> I'm kind of always tend to play with um, flat finger because I really have no time to actually curve it. <laughs> So it's like a on the way flying between those Ds. So my finger, anyways, my finger is gonna play with this part. So I also dip this part of finger into the orange. And guys, again, I don't wanna make this video like an hour long as I did with my previous one. I didn't realize it until I really look at the time when I was editing the video. Uh, so, um, sometimes in this video I'll just skip detailed explanation of every step because it's really just all the same steps that I made in my first part of this tutorial. Okay, so um, after I have imagined every note in this part with separate hands, with both hands, in timbre or I used sound texture, with dynamics, with voicing, how to make it unexplained in my previous videos, with movement, with glissando, um, uh, and that helps me to control my touch and play on the surface of the key without going too deep. I'm basically playing like this, which is very, very beneficial when, when you want to speed up. Um, I'm going to play it with correct wrist and elbow movement. So it's usually uh, first a quick overview about uh, which notes I took with my left hand. So let me just stop on the score. So let's start right from the top. So this one, I'm playing <laughs> with my left hand. And yes, this also too, and this again, and this again. 
and over here I come back. So, and then on the second line, again I take the melody with my left hand, so my right hand can rest a little bit. And over here, and here I'm taking D from the melody with my left hand, and I just continue with my right hand as well as this first D that already belongs to next melody I'm playing with the first third finger in my left hand okay so now this is how it looks like when you're playing slowly I tried to play even actually slowly I realized I played too fast in this video um, with correct wrist movements correct elbow movements with absolutely light and empty hands controlling the tone that I want to produce with my imagination and I'm gonna uh, play with the pedal right away again I'm not using any intonation or staccato so I'm just free to touch as long as I want I'm not making any articulation okay so motion and elbow bows to the left and now again this G with left hand I play together with the last note in my right hand the pass in fast tempo if I play after right trying to pretend that yeah sure I can reach it and I just play it quickly um, it's gonna be a mess so just make sure you play together cannot speak uh, I'm just gonna play <laughs> I need to focus show you exactly because I think this movement is very important because this place is just about this part so when you go up I move my wrist up and then here I move my wrist up but I move my elbow left wrist and elbow in the same direction wrist and elbow in contra motion and so the success of this part is being able to move your elbow quickly up and down, especially down. <laughs> okay. Next, going to intonation and staccato. Articulations are the variant of intonation, where the principle of singing internally in between notes with a glissando resistance remains the same. 
In every type of articulations, the first part of the interval is sung with resistance, but the second part is varied. In staccato, extremely accelerate the speed. In tenuta, move fully down with weight. In accents, mix staccato and tenuta, bring speed and weight at the same time. Uh, so this impulse in speeding up in my vocal cords uh, when I do this kind of part will affect the impulse in the finger muscles in my palm. So literally my arm is absolutely, my hand is absolutely loose. But because I'm making, okay, um, where is it? Okay, let's say I'm intonating this off. So I will play. Then when I make it, my finger is already preparing and it's playing and touching very effortlessly. So I'm not trying with my old hands, you know. <laughs> <laughs> scratch the key of trying to play staccato, but so in this case you have perfect staccato uh, without um, engaging the whole body to make it Okay, so this is how it looks like when I play with staccato and intonation now. speech and feeling of the difference of each interval tremendously helps finger muscles in the palm prepare to prepare quicker for the next note so it's almost like when I intonate an interval let's say this octave pretty easy on the right hand just always octave I already feel <coughs> I feel the exact distance between uh, this interval in the palm of my hand. So when I intonate, and I feel this is octave I'm intonating, uh, I know exactly how, uh, I don't know, where, where should I stop? <laughs> I know, it's like I feel the distance, it's, it's already in my hand. So that's uh, amazing how that works. Ability to feel a difference in singing different intervals will let us pre-feel through intonation the distance of every interval much more accurately. That helps mind and hands to faster prepare the intervals. As I have said before many times, if we can't feel fast while playing, we're not ready to play fast. Feel the difference in sound while singing with intonation these intervals.
let's play once and um you know um i just um, i mean i usually say that you have to just follow with one hand and just focus on the musical speech in one hand and when you have some breaks in that hand then you can just switch attention to the accompaniment let's say but in this case the melody in the left hand i have to feel it but the part is all about the right hand so i have to also feel my right hand so somehow i could manage i think that is not that hard to combine and feel musical speech in both hands so uh, it basically goes like this in my left hand almost all the time i'm feeling that i'm going by the second because the melody basically sometimes feel seconds while in my right hand I always give myself the impulse to intonate uh, octaves so it's basically in my mind it goes like second octave second octave second octave like this so let's see It's very important, guys. Um, you have to feel octave in the right hand and fourth in the left hand. I mean, unless you have a really huge paw, <laughs> you can like really easily touch the key this way. But I'm sure nobody is Lang Lang or Rachmaninoff here. So you have to intonate octaves and fourths together somehow. Feel it. step uh, phrasing and as usually I'm gonna give you a little overview on the structure of the phrasing here um, um, one second <laughs> so uh, every motif is one bar and the main interval that you're gonna lead everything in the motif like the kind of like the head of the motif is the last interval in the bar so the interval that goes uh, across the bar line in our main interval. The phrase is two bars, it has two motifs, and again, the main motif, the main part, the head of the phrase, is gonna be second motif usually, except the last phrase where I'm coming to the first motif, and the rest is uh, the tail, and uh, the sentence is for bars, the main part, uh, again, the head of the sentence, is the first phrase. Yes. So, that's how it goes. We're having here two sentences. Uh, first phrase is more important in every sentence. Phrasing is a structured intonation breathing where smaller blocks with more prominent sections are united into larger blocks with more prominent sections use intonation and weight in phrasing to make energetic crescendo towards more prominent sections and blocks While practicing phrasing, take a little break, a breath after every block. 
and slow down towards the main interval in a motif, the main motif in a phrase, and the main phrase in a sentence. So now I'm gonna uh, play by motifs and uh, I'm gonna drop the energy at the beginning and bring it up toward the end. It's obvious, <laughs> you know how it functions. And that's how my muscles will learn to breathe uh, the same way, less in the beginning, more, less, more. So it's kind of always exhalation uh, after I reach the main part and a bit ex inhalation towards the main part. So inhalation towards the main part, as soon as I reach and exhale uh, and uh, start inhaling to the next part. All right, so let's play my motif. Um, uh, the very first bar actually <laughs> belongs to the previous phrasing, uh, but I'll still play it. Never mind. Again, control the sound when you want to make energetic crescendo, not to make dynamical crescendo. You have to control it with your imagination. So you still imagine everything in piano. musical image to my feeling. So let's try. Uh, there are going to be six beats in the bar and we're going to start with slow tempo. So we're going to feel time uh, as relaxing and calm heartbeat. So tune into the image and let it live in this kind of time. And let's play um, at least once in the slow tempo. Feeling this heartbeat throughout all our playing, following the phrasing in our mind. Because if you just feel the time beat, then your music will be felt step by step, beat by beat. <laughs> so there will be no line in the music. Okay. Thank you. 
already in this temple <laughs> that um, there are particular places where I don't feel secure. So the first one is when I'm coming back here to this D. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna fix it by moving my uh, elbow uh, quicker and also give myself this kind of impulse to feel octave or is musical speech uh, more clear, more intense. So this is one thing. And another thing, yeah, um, I could already see that before. So uh, when I come back, uh, this is why, over here. So when both hands are fly like across the half of the keyboard, um, I also have to practice it. So let's say it's our difficult fragment here, okay. So the first thing, remember two things. First, analyze, find out what needs to be fixed. Second, practice repeated, uh, learn it backwards in the right way. So uh, we're gonna first move our elbows both in both hands quicker. That's what I'm gonna tell myself. And next one, intonate octave and fourth in the left hand, more intense. Okay. Let's say we kind of repeat it. Now let's go from the beginning of the bar in slow tempo. Um, <clears throat> five times in slow tempo, five times in, set, in moderate, five times in fast tempo, do the same with the second sentence, do the same with both sentences together. So let's do it quickly. I'm gonna skip slow tempo guys because it's too boring. So let's start with yeah, animated tempo. sentences right away. Thank you. 
ask this one. Um, all right, so that's how it works. Yeah, I made it in 30 minutes. Good job, Emma. Um, next week, I'll see you for the next part. Bye-bye.